Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, today's SPI's webinar on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I don't know about you guys, but right here in the Montreal area, it's big sunshine, about 30 degree, beautiful day. So I'm pretty psyched to go ahead with this webinar that we have ahead on us for, for today. So thank you very much uh, for being with us in such a large number. Uh, so today's topic that we are going to discuss with our partner here is access ladders. So we're going to talk about mobile ladders, fixed ladders, all the, 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 the questions that you guys uh, have in regards to that subject. So that's the, the, the main topic for today. And uh, before I go uh, uh, ahead with uh, the actual uh, topic of the webinar, I'll just introduce the uh, SPI for, for those people on, uh, on with us today that don't quite know us very well. So SPI is a cross-Canadian OHS safety company. So we've got some, uh, some offices in pretty much uh, a vast majority of the provinces across Canada. And uh, we offer both the distribution of PPE equipments, so harnesses, hard hats, boots, glasses, gloves, all, uh, all that kind of equipment. And we also uh, provide some services, so either technical services, consulting services. So uh, if you ever heard you need help uh, putting in place some work procedures, uh, what's, what's uh, a lot in demand lately is work procedures in regards to COVID-19, uh, training sessions, all that sort of stuff. We can help you guys out with that, with those things. So, and our main mission at SPI is, uh, is to be the most, the single most valuable partner for companies that value health and safety in their work environment. So that's that's our mission. That's why we come to work every day. So, and that's how we're, we're trying to help you guys out uh, with all of your OHNS uh, goals and and uh, projects that you guys have in your workplace. So, so that's for. For SPI, and as for the presenters for today, uh, well, uh, I'm going to be your presenter. So my name is Francis. I'm an OHNS partner at SPI, and I've been working here for almost four years now. Uh, started off as an advisor trainer, and uh, now more on the the uh, as a partner side. So uh, either work with some um, of my internal clients, which are the the business reps, and uh, the external clients, which is you guys. So if ever you have questions. Uh, your questions uh, might come to me and uh, I can help you guys out with your questions. And I have the privilege today to have an a actual uh, friend of mine and uh, an awesome partner that we do business with. So Pierre Olivier, which is uh, an expert in uh, guardrails and fall protection. So Pierre Olivier, if you want to present yourself. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Frank. Um, <clears throat> thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, thank you to everyone who's listening to uh, to the webinar today, despite the beautiful weather. Um, so I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Delta Prevention. Uh, I've been with the company for five years, um, both in uh, marketing and, and sales. And as of today, uh, interesting fact, I didn't say it uh, previously, Frank, but uh, due to COVID-19, we had to uh, reduce the team size a little bit. And now I'm up like uh, upfront with every project we're doing, uh, quoting, and uh, suggesting um, like guardrails and then the best setup. So I'm, I'm pretty hands-on in terms of products and also application. And today we're gonna talk about both. So it's a good fit. That's awesome, Pierre Olivier. And I, I know it's completely out of subject, but I saw on, uh, on LinkedIn and Facebook that you guys actually launched a new product for COVID-19, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for bringing it up. It's, um, it's a social distancing barrier, basically it's, is the not not that it's the new hot thing, but uh, we thought uh, how can we help uh, Canadian businesses as we do all the time, but in those times of crisis with our current resources. So of course uh, guardrails, we're using uh, aluminum tubes, uh, counterweight bases. So we developed uh, a system of, of sort of freestanding barrier uh, partitions, if you want. Uh, that allows businesses to go back to work. Uh, it's a pretty heavy duty setup, pretty sturdy. So it's definitely industrial uh, grade or for industrial application. And uh, we've had good, uh, good success with it so far. All right, perfect. That's cool, Pavé. Thanks for, for the info. So uh, before going uh, any further with this webinar, I'll just want to put in a, a couple of uh, housekeeping points. So uh, first off, uh, the webinar today is going to be around 60 minutes long. So we'll have about 50 minutes of content and then at the end, maybe a five to 10 minute question period. So I'll ask you guys if ever you can keep your questions till the end. 
you have a Q&A box uh, on the, the GoToWebinar console uh, at your disposal that you can write down your questions if ever you, you have some. But uh, we won't interrupt the webinar to, to answer those questions right away. We'll wait to the end to, uh, to answer them. And if ever we don't have time to answer them all, uh, just, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, your question won't be left there. We'll, we'll take time to, to answer it by email. Either me or Pierre-Olivier or someone from our teams uh, will uh, get in contact with you and answer your question. So you guys shouldn't worry about that. And uh, also, we will send you a questionnaire at the end, so a survey. Uh, so this survey just helps us out to get better. So we just want you guys to really write down what you thought about the webinar, what we could do better, uh, and all of that sort of thing. So you guys could really help us out if ever you, you, you tell the truth in that questionnaire. And uh, we'll be able to, to, to do better webinars for you guys uh, in the near future. And the last uh, point, but uh, really important, is that uh, this webinar, you'll, you'll, you'll get a, um, uh, a link that enables you or some people from your team to, to listen to it. So if they didn't have the chance to log on and listen to it live, you'll have a link uh, that you'll be able to listen to it uh, at a later time and date. So these are the, uh, the important points that I wanted to cover before going ahead with this webinar. So Pierre-Olivier, could you explain to us what is Delta prevention? What do you guys do? Uh, where are you guys uh, uh, located and all that sort of fun stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Delta Prevention, um, so we're a Canadian manufacturer of uh, rooftop fall protection equipment. Now, what we do is quite precise, and this is what we do, I'd say 99% of the time, is we do non-penetrating guardrails. So since uh, the beginning of the company, this is what we've been specializing in, non-penetrating guardrails. So permanent guardrails for full fall protection, but that does not anchor in the roof membrane, that do not perforate the, the, the envelope, the building envelope, basically. So uh, this is what we do uh, every day. We have, of course, different accessories that goes with it, but our core product is non-penetrating guardrails for permanent use. They're not for construction work. They're not for roofers, for example. They're meant to be left there permanently to protect areas or basically to correct areas that are at risk, that are that, that where there's a risk of, of fall, where, where there's a falling hazard, basically. So uh, we're based uh, in uh, Brossard, uh, just out on the outskirts of Montreal. We're a Canadian company and uh, we use all local uh, suppliers and local product. We're pretty proud of it and we like to, to put it forward, especially in these in these days um and uh yeah this is what we do we're pretty much specialized in this uh rooftop safety equipment for flat roof M most of the time it's not for residential or for a uh, sloped roof or very slow uh, low slope but most of the time it's for flat roof and uh what are the ba the, the base made out of uh pierre olivier are they like made out of rubber or something like that or and and what's the weight of those things like does it yeah, weigh yeah. a lot or yeah, you have a sharp eyes, uh, Frank. So uh, yeah, the counterweight base are made out of recycled rubber. So if you were to take one of these bases and cut it in half and look inside, there's no like, there's no sand or water in there. Like I heard, <laughs> that's some, what some people think sometimes in trade shows, but it's 100% recycled rubber. As you see it like this, they weigh uh, 50 pounds each. So it's still quite manageable for one, one worker to, uh, to to move around and uh, move them around and install them and put them in place and uh, the, the actual railing itself the vertical post or the horizontal railing is uh, anodized aluminum so lightweight uh, super durable over time for uh, for protection against rust corrosion and also will uh, will look good and will keep looking good over the time uh, we offer a 10-year warranty we're the only one in the industry offering this so we really stand by our product in terms of uh, durability, especially since it's a permanent installation. It's meant to be left there. So uh, it needs to uh, hold, uh, hold well against, uh, against the weather and the, the elements, basically. And one last thing I wanted to put forward to uh, Pierre is uh, that even though you guys are based out of Montreal, we can still distribute that product across the country, right? Of course, of course. We, uh, well, I personally do 
quotes and look at projects in every provinces each and every day. Uh, and like the, the 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 staff at at SPI, like you said, you have you have you have branches in, in every province. And so I've worked with people in Alberta, in in BC, in uh, in Ontario, in every province. And so we can really help you everywhere. Um, delivery is really fast. I think uh, with our current setup, we're really well organized to deliver. And like our lead time is uh, around one week right now. So it's pretty competitive, I think. So if you have a quick intervention to do, we can help you with that anywhere in the country. All right, perfect. Thanks a lot, Pierre. Uh, so for today's agenda, uh, we'll, we'll start off the webinar with some statistics. Uh, then we'll go ahead with some applicable regulations and standards. So they're, pr they're pretty much all the same, the regulations and standard. I know that if you guys are from BC or Alberta or Ontario or from Quebec, uh, they're, they're pretty much all the same. I know that there's some standard regulations for all the provinces, but like I said, all in all, they, they're all pretty much the same. So uh, we won't look at all of the different regulations. We'll just take a look at general regulations and uh, we'll go ahead with that. Uh, we'll take a look at the different ladder classes, uh, the different types of ladders, uh, either fixed or mobile. Uh, we'll take a look at how to inspect that type of equipment, uh, the mandatory criteria for installing and use. So uh, what do I need to take into consideration before uh, using a ladder, before using a step ladder, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we'll hand, uh, end things off with uh, how to handle uh, a ladder and a step ladder, and then there'll be the question period at the end. So without further ado, we'll jump into the data. So first data that I want to show you guys is that in the industrial sector, there is uh, around 147 falls from ladders uh, every year. And from these falls, there's 20% of the falls that lead to permanent disability. So I think that's a, a pretty shocking uh, percentage. So I, I think it's pretty pretty important for, for workers to, to secure themselves and know how to use that type of equipment. Because as you can see here, a lot of the, the injuries that occur in uh, ladders and step ladders uh, lead to permanent disabilities. So it's a pretty, pretty big percentage here. And it's not something to to shy away from. And uh, the second cause, it's also the second cause of serious falls in the the workplace. So pretty big statistics here. Uh, like I said, a lot of people think, well, it's just a ladder, it's just a step ladder. I know how to use it. Well, you always need to do a risk assessment before using them and actually know how to use that type of equipment too. So I think these are some pretty shocking data. That's a, a good starting point for uh, our webinar. As for, like I said, the regulations and standard, depending on the type of work that you guys do, there's either going to be the occupational health and safety regulations that are going to talk about ladders and step ladders and fixed ladders, or the constru your, your construction code applicable to your province. So you'll get pretty much all of the information that you guys need, depending on uh, where you guys work in these two types of regulations. And there is also the federal CSA standard, so CSA Z11 that uh, talks about the different uh, types of ladders and what to do and what not to do when working with these type of equipment. And there's also in that CSA standard, the ladder class that you guys can see down in the, the table in the bottom right corner of the screen. So there's various classes of uh, ladders and step ladders. So either class one, two, and three, uh, one for construction and industry, two for commerce and agricultural use, and three for domestic use. So you, you can see at the far uh, right hand of that table, there's the load capacity. So obviously for class one, uh, they're a high load capacity for class two medium and for class three, it's a, it's a low capacity. I've also done some research before this webinar and uh, I've went on to some uh, various uh, <clears throat> manufacturer sites. And uh, on these sites, you can also find uh, different load capacities. So for one site, for example, I saw that for a load capacity of, uh, and, and they also have colors for different load capacities. So I saw that for a load capacity of 200 pounds, uh, the color code was red, for 225 was green, 250 was blue, 300 was orange, and 375 was gray. So you guys can either differentiate the load capacities by either looking at the, uh, the tags on the side of the equipment or by the color itself. 
but you just have to make sure that the color itself uh, stays the same throughout all of the manufacturers. So these are the, uh, the basic regulations and standard that I wanted to show you guys. And there's also uh, one point that I want to bring was that a lot of people ask me the question, can I work on a ladder? Well, usually a ladder is used to, to access a different level of some sort, you know? So it's, uh, it's, to, it's to get me to, to, to some place. But sometimes uh, I don't have a choice. I have to do a certain work in a ladder. While doing that type of work, uh, what is very important is to keep three points of contact inside of the ladder. And if you can't keep three points of contact, then you need to use a harness and an anchor point uh, with a lanyard or, self or SRL or whatever to, to secure yourself on that anchor point. So, so first off, are you allowed to work in the ladder? Yes, for very short uh, use. We usually talk about uh, a task of less than an hour. If it's more than an hour, use something else like a work elevated platform, scissor lift, uh, skyjack or whatever. But if it's a small task, then yes, you can work in a ladder if you keep three points of contact. And if you can't uh, keep that three points of contact, use a harness and an anchor point. So that's what I want to bring to, to you guys with this uh, slide here. And well, the different types of ladders, uh, we've got your step ladder, your platform step ladder, your articulated combination ladder, single ladder, extension ladders, and fixed ladder as well. So depending on the, the, the type of work that you guys need to do, uh, depending on your work environment, uh, these are all uh, the, the tools that you guys have at your disposal to use to perform uh, the work that needs to be done. And also, we've got this uh, mobile ladder here, which is a wheeled ladder. If you guys have the question, it is not in the CSA Z11 standard. So if you guys need to have some more information on that product, uh, you're going to be able to get it in the American standard, which is the ANSI A14.7. So if ever you guys look at the, our regulations in Canada, in your provinces, there's pretty much not going to be any information on that type of equipment. You'll have to consult the ANSI A14.7 standard for that type of equipment. As for fixed ladders, uh, there's three major points that we need to take a look at for, for, for regulation. So the first point, and uh, I'm not going to discuss to you guys a lot about that first point because uh, Pierre is going gonna, is gonna to give us some more detail uh, on that point. But the first point is uh, the fixed ladder needs to be fitted with guardrails around the floor opening. So you have to secure the opening and this, uh, how you're going to secure it, you need to have a, re a removable enclosure to access the ladder, so a gate. And uh, you'll see that uh, Delta and uh, Pierre is going to talk to us about some 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 pretty cool and awesome products that they that they can offer you guys. So the second point is uh, the fixed ladder needs to be fitted with a fall arrest device that is compliant with the standard CSA Z259.2.5. So if ever you have a fall hazard of more than six meters uh, inside of your uh, well on on your your, your fixed ladder, you need to equip that ladder with a vertical lifeline. So uh, this is a pretty uh, new standard. It's a pretty new thing. So, uh, so that's the point number two that I want to bring forward. And point number three is that no employee shall carry tools or materials when using a fixed ladder. I talked to it about, uh, about that point uh, earlier on in the webinar. So three points of contact at all times. If ever you need to bring up some tools or some some uh, some materials, then just make sure that you have three points of contact. If you can't, well, tie off these tools on your, your, your tool belt. And if that's not even possible, well, once you're up there, just with a, with a rope or a, a pulley system, you can pull up your, your ladders and your materials that you need to, uh, to use for, for the work. Uh, so good techniques for fixed ladders. So when using a fixed ladder, examine it closely and carefully to ensure that there is no damage. So it's like a harness. It's like all other type of PPEs. It's a work equipment. So you need to do a certain inspection before using it. So take a look at and check if the, the rails and rungs are weak, worn, or damaged. Uh, is there signs of corrosion? Or is the fasteners loosened or broken? So these are all points that you guys should take a look at uh, before climbing into a fixed ladder. So it doesn't mean that if it's there and it's fixed, it's always in good condition. Uh, weather and uh, usage can uh, 
can uh, do some damage on that type of equipment. And uh, my last slide before I hand uh, everything over to, to Pierre is uh, just a check too for rusty bolts and concrete deterioration. Like I said, weather can damage a lot of things. So this is a pretty common thing to see concrete starting to de de deteriorate around the anchor points of the fixed ladder. So, and a good practice too is yes, before every use to inspect it, but every year annually, we should get a, a, a nice proper ladder inspection by either an engineer or someone that's qualified to, to give us their opinion on uh, that type of equipment. So before handing everything over to Pierre, I'll have a, we'll have our first interactive question for today. So I'd like to ask you guys, do you have an unprotected fixed ladders uh, or do you have unprotected fixed ladders on your building? So you'll have three, three choices of answer. The first one, yes, and the exit is protected. B, yes, and they don't have protection. And C, no, I don't have ladders. So I'll let you guys a little uh, 20 to 30 seconds to, to have the chance to look at that. And uh, Pierre, if ever you want to analyze these, uh, <clears throat> let us know the, the percentage. I think uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what you guys answer. Yeah. Well, earlier this morning, uh, the I don't have ladders was uh, the, there was a, a big uh, a big part there. So I guess that there was another method to go on the rooftop. And now uh, and also mo most of them it was pretty even between protected and unprotected. So. I can't wait to see how, how this crowd is doing here. Okay, so see, mostly um, the one that have access ladder are protected, which is very good. Congratulations, yeah. everyone. Uh, don't have protection, only 10%. That's good. And don't have ladders, 60. Okay. I guess. I guess well, then that uh, there's other well, like methods. Said, yeah, the, a lot of people still use the. They don't have fixed ladders on their buildings, right? They still use the the mobile ladders to access rooftops, right? Or or an access hatch as well. There's there's yeah. other methods. Yeah, exactly. Like a stairs that that lead up to. Or stairs. To, yeah. All right. Well, perfect. Hey, thanks guys for 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 putting yourself up to that little question here. So uh, Pierre Olivier, without further ado, I'll I'll pass you the the ball there. You can explain us your your products that you guys can offer to, to help us secure fixed ladders. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Frank. Um, so uh, as you mentioned, um, every regulation talks about having protection uh, at each side of the ladder or basically at the ladder exit. Uh, so what we at Delta Prevention have, have designed is uh, a few kits or little system, pre-made system, uh, so that we can um, I, well, not identify the issue, but solve the issue with a, a simple uh, kit that is easy to install, quick to install, at, and that will not perforate or damage your building. So on the next slide, so basically, as I said earlier, what we do every day when we get up in the morning is non-penetrating guardrail, uh, ballasted guardrail, as some people call it, because the counterweight, the black bases that you see this there, are, are weighted. So they're 50 pounds each. Uh, at the uh, end of each section, we have more to make sure that every point of the guardrail meets regulation. Basically, the configuration that we see here, the first one that we see is the VSS Classic. So it's one of our uh, most popular configuration. Um, it's built to meet the Canadian building code uh, for guardrail, for, for permanent guardrail. So it's not meant to be a temporary guardrail. There's a little difference in the standard. Uh, so that's really important to, uh, to ask when starting a project for, for a guardrail or when you're asking for quotes, make sure uh, that the, the product you're looking at meets the Canadian building code. So in that case here, uh, what we're offering on the top picture is, uh, is two basically two 10 foot section of guardrail in our very DSS classic configuration. Uh, we could also do shorter. We've done uh, just recently, earlier this week, I've done a, a project in in, uh, in Calgary where, uh, well, where, where we had three ladders and they had only six foot uh, on each side, six foot of space. So uh, we could adapt our system to to meet their needs. So that's uh, that's one of the beauty of the classic. It's quite flexible. Also, the another proof that it's flexible is that it can be installed. Um, like in a perpendicular way, 
uh, like to the roof edge. So the top picture, the guardrail is parallel to the roof edge, and the bottom picture, it's perpendicular. Why would we want to do it this way? Well, it's a very good way to start a warning line perimeter. So at the bottom of the uh, of the picture that we see here, you see those two uh, yellow lines. Those are warning lines. So basically, uh, just a, a visual safety perimeter, also called a bump line. We see them often in construction site, but uh, what we design is a permanent system. So a permanent warning line that is meant to be left on the rooftop for not forever, but like long term, permanently. So the guardrail will lead people from the access ladder to the safety perimeter, and the safety perimeter will be uh, enclosed, or there will be the, the warning line all around it, so that people that are working within the perimeter are safe, and they will be able to work without harnesses if if the perimeter is shut down completely. So uh, that's the very best setup to have a guardrail like this leading to a warning line perimeter. I think that's pretty cool, uh, the 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 warning line, uh, Pierre, because uh, it takes it takes away, I think, the the gray area that some people might have uh, on their workplace, you know. So where do I need to secure myself? Where is it safe to work? So that pretty much cuts it right through the middle. So inside of the per perimeter, you're safe. You don't have to wear a harness. When you go outside of it, well, now you need to take into consideration how you're going to protect yourself, right? Exactly, exactly. And um, also some people will say, well, my roof membrane already has a, a pathway or a corridor where uh, it's, a, it's a different color. So like the whole roof is gray and there's a path that is red and, yeah. it, and it's at two meters. So like I did it right. I, I showed people where to walk. Sure. But uh, like as we're all in Canada, there's a few months where this corridor will not be visible. Yeah, so, exactly. Full of snow uh, and ice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the warning line will be clearly visible uh, in in all in all weather, uh, whether it's night or or day or winter or summer. So all it's right. more and more. It's popular. Uh, it's a, very popular these days. That's cool. And uh, and uh, you you kind of answered another question that I had for you, uh, which is uh, if ever a client has a a particular demand for you, you talked about your client in Calgary that only had six feet right beside uh, the ladder. Do you guys have like engineers that you guys work with that can uh, help help clients uh, if ever they have specific needs that can uh, help you adapt your product to, to that client? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, in this case, it was an easy one, but yeah, we sure work with uh, engineers in all provinces um, to design if needed to uh, basically to customize our uh, our original setup to modify it to, um, to be able to fit our product into a specific situation. Another example of that would be a high slope uh, roof, uh, where we, uh, instead of having a certain pattern of, of, uh, of counterweight, uh, we got this pattern of counterweight um, closer to each other. So basically, instead of having a post every six and a half feet, we had a post every four feet, for example. So more counterweight, more traction, more weight, uh, therefore, our origin, it, this new guardrail or this new configuration was stronger than the original one, and this was tested, this was approved, so the project went forward. Perfect, that's awesome. Yeah, this is this is exactly like this is a a, a very common situation that uh, after many occurrences we got like we got uh, we scratch our head how can we do a sort of a standard setup for. Uh, rooftop ladders, fixed ladders on corner, on the corner of buildings. Because of course, when we do non-penetrating railing, we need to have space for the counterweight. And in this case, we have sort of two, two, two guardrail where, where with with counterweight that are sort of interacting together. So basically, if you look at the two, the two first counterweight that are straight after the ladder, they're connected together. So the guardrail to the right. Uh, uses the, the, the weight of the guardrail to the left and vice versa. So both of them meet code and uh, we could save one counterweight base, therefore saving some space, uh, which is always tricky. And um, there you go, we, 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 went to, we were able to develop a custom situation for um, those very, uh, very common uh, corner ladders like this one. The, the next slide shows uh, our other configuration. So the first one we were looking at is the VSS Classic where we have the uh, sort of the leg on the ground. 
This one here, uh, instead of adding the, the legs on the ground, the counterweight legs, it's a, it's a full height return. So basically at each end of those little guardrail section, you see that there's a, a little section that, that comes back towards the inside of the building. This is not guardrail, this is just added structure to make sure that the actual guardrail, the one that is in line or parallel to the edge is strong enough. So therefore we've created a little uh, kit for access ladder made with the compact configuration. Some people will prefer this one because uh, there's less obstruction on the ground. Um, however, there still is those, those return that we need to take into consideration. Uh, but uh, both are good, both meet the code, the national building code, and uh, we'll suggest or recommend one or the other depending on the situation on the roof and the obstacles. And uh, really it's, it's uh, every building is different and we'll try to recommend the best setup. It's also a good uh, starting point for a warning line per meter. And then um, lots of people will ask, uh, can, I, can I close off the ladder, like basically the, the space left by the ladder because it's sort of falling hazard as well. So we do have a, a self-closing aluminum safety gate. This is our design. It's manufactured uh, in, in Canada here. And uh, the one we see in the picture is a 24 to 36. So it's adjustable in width. So it can really fit uh, like basically a smaller space or wider space in the same unit can fit both. And uh, it can be installed on structure either round like our, con like our guardrail or square. So if you have like a mezzanine in the factory where you have a, like a ladder leading to that mezzanine or maybe a small staircase with a typical like square shaped tube, uh, this this gate can be adapted to this um, if the tube is uh, at the maximum of two inch of uh, diameter. So it's a very very cool design. Uh, so here we have just some picture of um, to the left um, like a classic um, kit for uh, for a roof uh, roof ladder. So as you see here, it's not always the ladder that leads to the ground. This one was a ladder between two roof levels. So we have to think about those as well. If there's 10 feet or more in between those two levels, you have to act. Same thing actually for the other picture. It was not meant this way, but both of these pictures show ladder that go to a lower level. So uh, on the right picture, it's a combination of classic and compact with uh, self-closing uh, safety gate. So uh, very, uh, very typical stuff. All right. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Pierre, for, for, for all of that, that information about your products. And I think that uh, later on in the webinar, you'll, you'll present us another product, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, very exciting. All right. Perfect. So uh, before handing uh, over the ball again uh, to you, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead with some more information about the, the ladders and step ladders. So uh, first off, we'll, we'll take a look at how, when, and what to inspect. I know that I've I talked about it earlier, maybe in the webinar, but we'll go... Uh, and review some of those points. So always look at the screws, joints, bolts, if they're all tightened. These are something very important to take a look at before uh, using that type of equipment. Uh, make sure that the feet, steps, and rungs are intact and attached. So just, just make sure that the, the equipment is in proper condition. Uh, inspect it visually. Uh, make sure that there's nothing missing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all types of things that you wanna inspect before using um, a ladder and step ladder, and for sure, if ever you see some defects, well, just just put it out of service. If ever it's a minor defect, some manufacturer will allow you to repair the equipment yourself if you received uh, a certain training session. But if ever it's a major uh, defect, you 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 have to send the equipment back to the manufacturer, and they'll either repair it or replace it, and whatnot. So, uh, so defects, very important, just remove it from service. And after that, once everything has been corrected, your workers can uh, start using the equipment again. So we'll go ahead now with some safety principles when using a ladder and step ladder. So the first point uh, that I talked about earlier today was that when you're on your workplace, you need to make sure that your, your, the equipment that you're gonna use, so the ladder and step ladder is uh, is recognized that the CSA Z11 standards. So on the tag, on the side of the equipment, you need to see the CSA sign. If you don't see the CSA sign, it most likely um, gives us the information that you can't use that equipment uh, for work. So you can use it at home. At home, you're not at work. 
So, uh, but for, for work purposes, uh, the equipment needs to have the CSA logo on it. So that's the first point that I want to bring forward. Uh, second point is that the equipment accessories for the work to be performed. So you need to analyze uh, the work, the task that needs to be done and choose the proper equipment. Earlier on today, we discussed about the different types of ladders and step ladders. There's different lengths too. Uh, you can be performing work uh, right beside uh, some uh, um, electri uh, some electri uh, electrical components. So just to make sure that you have selected the right uh, equipment for the job tasks at hand. Uh, third point, never reach a faraway point. So you always have to stay square to the uh, ladder. So don't reach out away from it. All that's gonna do is just increase your chances of falling from, uh, from the ladder. So very important point, the third point. And we see a lot of that common mistakes, uh, mistake being done on various work sites. Fourth point, never stand on the last two upper rungs of the ladder and neither on the last step of the step ladder. So, and on the step ladder, it, it's clearly indicated this is not a step. So don't step on it, don't sit on it. Uh, it's, it is not to be used. And also the same thing for the last uh, two upper rungs of a ladder. All right, so fifth point, uh, support points flat on the ground. So just to make sure that when you install the ladder, you're, you're on a flat ground, a non-slippery ground. So there's no oil, ice, like uh, Pierre Olivier talked about, like we're in Canada. So for, for depending on you live, where you live, you have either four to six months of, uh, of snow and icy cold weather. So these are important points to take into consideration while installing uh, your ladder and step ladder. Uh, point six, never use a portable ladder or step ladder. On, um, on elevated work platforms, so either scissor lift or uh, skyjack or whatever. So it, it, that type of equipment is not to be used inside uh, some uh, elevated work platforms. All right, next off, just make sure that you have uh, the proper inclination of the ladder as well. So you have to make sure that the base of your ladder is about a fourth to a third of, uh, of its height. So that's how you know that you have the proper inclin inclination of the ladder. Eighth point, hold the portable ladder. So either tie it off or have someone hold it, but it needs to be secured and in place while uh, someone, a worker, is uh, going up or down the ladder. The ninth point, uh, when used as an access point, the portable ladder must exceed the access level of at least 900 millimeters. So 900 millimeters is actually three feet. So an easy trick is uh, when you want to access a certain level, just make sure that there's three rungs uh, that goes on top of that level that you want to access. So that's how you're going to know that you have at least 900 millimeters. The 10th point is to climb up or down a portable, a portable ladder. You always have to face it. And it's not only portable ladders, it's fixed ladders too. Always have to face the ladder, and if ever you have to carry tools or materials, like I said earlier on, you always need three points of contact. So these are major points. And the majority of the accidents that happen is that either someone wasn't facing the ladder and wasn't having three points of contact. So point number 10, very important. And point number 11, so uh, you have to make sure that, like I said, if you're working uh, around some electrical components, you need to make sure that you have the proper uh, distance between yourself, the ladder, and the electrical components. So right here, the approach area. So according to uh, your provincial regulations, you'll either have three meters, five meters, eight meters, or 12 meters to respect, depending on the voltage of the electrical line that is close. So just, you guys, I just wanted to put that, that slide in. Just make sure, just look at your, uh, your regulations in regards to the province that you're in and make sure that you know what these distances are in regards to, to the voltage and energy that goes through these uh, electrical lines that you or your workers are performing work around. So I just wanted to bring that point up. I think it was pretty important. So just to summarize the important points that I just said, I know that was 11 points. But uh, the, the, the four major ones that I want to really you guys to focus on is to install the ladder on a stable and solid surface, do a risk assessment beforehand, make sure it's not on a slippery surface, climb up with your hands uh, free, so always three points of contact, put your tools on your belt 
or use a, a pulley system or a rope to bring them up on a higher uh, level. Point number three, the upper support must exceed at least 900 millimeters or three feet, like I said, and secure the ladder firmly. So either with a rope, someone holding it, and uh, Pierre is actually gonna show us a, a pretty cool product that Delta has developed to uh, help us respect point number four, so to secure the ladder firmly. So these were the important points that I want to take a look at uh, for ladders. Uh, so here are some examples. I won't go through them all. So you can see there the picture on the left, there's someone that is not square to the ladder, doesn't have three points of contact. So increases his chances of falling dramatically. Uh, there's the, the painter there that thinks he's working for the Cirque du Soleil, just uh, painting the ceiling uh, like Michelangelo there. But uh, <laughs> Like uh, when we're saying to secure the ladder firmly, it doesn't mean that it doesn't need to rest on the building itself. So that's, uh, that's a big no-no right there, all right? And we've got another picture here. Uh, we can see a worker in China hasn't selected the right equipment. It's pretty, uh, it, it's not as, uh, the, the ladder is not as long as it should be. So they're using here, uh, again, uh, a good, good co-worker there that sacrificed himself and his shoulders to, to lift the uh, the worker to the proper height. So these are just bad working techniques. I know the big title in red says good working techniques. That's just because we're in the uh, the module of the webinar that we're talking about good working techniques. But these are things that you guys should never do if uh, you have your health and safety at heart. So or the health and safety of your workers and coworkers at heart. Um, as for the good working techniques for step ladders. Well, we always have to make sure that the spreaders on that type of step ladders are open and in locked position and ensure that the spreaders are not deformed or damaged. So you still have to inspect it. They're pretty much the same, same it's pretty much the same inspections as mobile ladders. Um, so just inspect it, make sure that you use the equipment properly, make sure to read the user guide before using it. Uh, you have to check the stability of the step ladder, like the ladders, you know, don't put it on a slippery, uh, slippery um, ground. Make sure there's no oil, ice, snow, whatnot. Uh, only use the step ladder when in open position. So always, uh, always make sure it's locked. Never step on the, like, like in the picture here, the, the last step of the step ladder. So you guys pretty much know all of this stuff. It's just a uh, to make sure that you actually put it in in uh, in practice and uh, try to avoid uh, serious injuries by doing these uh, things that are not recommended. And another picture here for the step ladders. Well, obviously, don't don't do what that guy is doing right there. First of all, first of all, he's not even on the ground. He's on a kind of picnic tables on cement blocks and on an electrical block uh, box, and the uh, the stoppers are not put in a proper position as well for the step ladder. So these are just I know they're 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 funny pictures, but there there there's actually some some things to learn from these pictures behind the the uh, humoristic uh, side of uh, the image. So we'll we'll go ahead, Pierre, with uh, two more interactive questions. So the first yeah, one, yeah. Else, guys. Uh, well, we're asking you, do you use extension ladders to access a roof or roof level in your workplace? So we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys have 15 to 20 seconds to answer that. And I think we'll, we'll see some interesting, uh, answers there. Eh, Pierre? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can't wait to see what, uh, what this crowd, um, <clears throat> will, will say, um, earlier this morning there, I don't remember precisely. I have it noted somewhere, but, um, it was, it was pretty mixed. Um, but you know, more and more, I, I see uh, maybe because we have a new product in, in that field, but I see that people actually use uh, extension ladder, and and in fact, it could be a good solution for some some areas where you do not want to leave a fixed ladder, or you don't you don't want to leave an access permanently an access to the the, the, the roof uh, in exactly. a school, for example. So um, uh, extension ladder could be good. Oh, see, that's very good. So 80% said yes, that they use an extension ladder to access a roof or a roof level. So right. the following will probably be interesting. Exactly. So you'll have 80% of the, the, the participants that your next product are going to be interested in. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next one off, guys. Uh, what are you doing to secure your extension ladder and prevent it from slipping? So either A, do you uh, tie with an elastic band? B 
put it against a structure or C, you just don't do nothing. So uh, we'll let you guys a couple of seconds here to answer that question. Yeah, I, it was a, a large, large proportion of people in the first group that unfortunately did nothing. Um, well, you know, when you don't know that there's an option. Uh, it's Exactly. It's when you don't fine. know, it's... <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't know yet. So can't wait to see the result of, of this one. Okay. Yeah, nobody uses the, the elastic band. Okay. Put it against a structure. That's good. I don't. I, I do nothing. Okay. Well, in in, uh, in in some cases, I think we'll, we might have a solution for that, or at least an option. And exactly. uh, yeah, the structure is. I mean, it's it's something. It's gonna prevent sliding on one one side at least. So uh, let's keep going with the the webinar, and we'll we'll have some solutions. All right. Perfect. So I'll I'll hand you the ball there, Pierre. Okay. Good. So. Um, so basically, like we said, the use is, the use of extension ladder is is dangerous, risky, and and often recurring. Okay, so um, there's there's secure the ladder somehow. You need to position it somehow. So in the, the previous question, we had like uh, put it like put it next to a structure. So you need to put it somewhere to prevent the slide. Uh, also, snow, ice, the surface condition makes the usage and the operation very difficult, and as always, when there's recurrent work, uh, multiple visits on rooftop per day, uh, productivity always sort of comes against safety. So the product that we develop with uh, basically with SPI, it, it came from, um, from a need of one of SPI's customer. And um, you, can, we can, you can switch now. So the, uh, we, we developed this with um, a, pretty big HVAC contractor. So of course they had technician going on rooftop every day using uh, extension ladder. And the, the problem, the initial situation was that one of their worker just put the ladder next to nothing, didn't tie it off. The ladder slid, slid on, the, on the side and the worker fell and broke a few bones pretty severely. So um, it was a, a workplace that they knew were was a bit dangerous, but they had sort of no 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 solution. So they came up to to SPI and and to us to ask us, do you have something to secure my ladder, but without anchoring in the building? Because it's not my building; it's my customer's building. So if you are building owner or your uh, or your health and safety specialist in a building that you know that you have technician uh, visiting it, this could be interesting for for you if if they if you ask them use your own ladder we don't have a fixed ladder so basically this thing uh the the, the ladder stabilizer system uh, it installs quickly and without any perforation of the roof membrane of the parapet wall of the fascia of the building just like all our product it's non-penetrating it fits pretty much all type of flat roof with or without a parapet so the system is very versatile so as you'll see in the next slide the hooks on the front will be used to uh, to fix sort of fix the ladder in place make sure it doesn't slide so it's going to give a very solid grip to it and then once the worker uh reached the top uh, of the ladder or the roof the the two uh, basically the two extension or the, the oops will 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 be used to uh to help the worker move out of the ladder and then step in step inside the guardrail section and then walk towards the center of the roof to safety. So on the next slide, the left picture here, that's what that's what's happening uh, once you reach your rooftop. So basically, you have good uh, handles to grab on both sides, and then once you reach the top of the roof, there's a guardrail leading you towards the center uh, of the roof. So um, so it's a pretty uh, complete system. And it's gonna both secure the, the the ladder itself, the ladder usage, and also lead people towards the center of the roof. Because even if you tie it, like tie your ladder somehow, or lean it against something, once you're on the side of the rooftop, you're, you're you sort of still need to. You can't stay there. So um, the system works on both uh, parapet wall, with parapet wall, or without. So when there's no parapet wall, the system 
becomes sort of a just like a leg or a, a support and when there's a parapet wall this this leg will uh, will pivot and become sort of a pressed it, it will be it, it's going to press the parapet wall uh, tightly just to secure uh, in place and then the the weight of the system comes from uh, the counterweight that we have at the back of the of the guardrail there so we use our standard counterweight so we have a hundred uh, 100 pound of weight on each side so total 200 pound and at this distance it's extremely extremely strong so a uh, very cool system that we're proud to to offer to uh, all canadian businesses all right perfect thanks pio that's that's pretty awesome i, I didn't i didn't even know you guys did uh, that type of product before uh, you presented to, presented to me uh, a couple of weeks ago so that's uh i, I think there's going to be a lot of demand for that and uh i think it's 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 pretty cool product so uh, for uh, for before uh, leaving you guys, I'll just uh, take over some some more information here about ladders and step ladders. So uh, so I'll just give you some advice for handling. So ideally, a ladder step ladder must be handled by two person. But we know that you guys pretty much, if you, if you're not working in teas, you're you're pretty much alone. So uh, if ever you are alone and have to carry a ladder or step ladder, well, first off, you'll have to hold the equipment on your shoulder with one arm slart, uh, slid through the rails, as you can see on the picture here on the right. Uh, always keep the front uh, and low to avoid hidden overhead obstacles. And it's, it's also like using that technique is always, it's also gonna give you a better, better view of where you're going. And try not to pivot suddenly. Uh, if you do so, you might hit some, some objects, uh, some sh structure, or some people. So. Uh, just uh, make sure to follow these uh, quick and uh, easy steps here. And uh, if ever you are with uh, someone else, a coworker, and you wanted uh, to carry it by uh, two people, then make sure to be on the same side. Be each position as closely as possible to each extremity of the ladder or step ladder. Walk at the same speed and agree to a manual or vocal code to coordinate stop uh, direction and changes alone or with uh, two other people. Just always be careful when going through doors, passageways, or, uh, or any area with, when uh, visibility is reduced, and ensure the extensions of the ladder are locked and ropes properly fastened. So these were the, the advices that I wanted to put forward for, for carrying that type of equipment. So we're already at the end of our webinar. So in summary, uh, I know that we covered a ton of information uh, if ever you guys have questions, just feel free to, to throw your questions uh, at SPI. Uh, you'll have our contacts later on. Uh, you'll have a contact later on uh, at the end of the webinar. So just write it down, write us your questions. Uh, we'll be glad to answer them all. So in summary for the webinar, we'll uh, assess the needs. It's the base of all occupational health and safety. So do risk assessments, analyze the work that needs to be done. That's going to enable you to to choose the right equipment, the right length of the equipment. Is it an aluminum or fiberglass ladder that I need? Uh, it's gonna help you choose, uh, like I said, the right equipment and minimize uh, the risks. Uh, also inspect the equipment before each use, uh, either the step ladder, the ladder, the fixed one, the mobile one, uh, you always have to inspect it. Uh, we, we usually tend to inspect only PPEs like harnesses, lanyards, SRLs, uh, confined space equipment, but it's also very important to inspect uh, ladders and step ladders, and also use the following equipment properly. Uh, we had uh, 11 points that I discussed with you, so make sure it's a CSA ladder, make sure to be square to the ladder, three points of contact. When carrying tools, uh, fasten them to your tool belt or bring them up with a rotor pulley system. So these are all things that I want you guys to remember next time that you need to use uh, that type of equipment. So we're now at our question period. So if ever you guys have any questions, you guys can send them right ahead. So do you see questions, uh, Pierre Olivier? Yeah, not yet, um, but we're here. I think I think we have um, a few minutes. So if you have any questions uh, about anything we discussed, uh, it's the right time to uh, to go ahead. All right, don't be shy, guys. All right, so uh, so as of now, we don't uh, we don't have any questions, but like I said, you can see right here, marketing at spi-s.com, our phone number, 
Uh, if ever later on in the day or next week or whatnot, you have any questions in regards to what we just discussed, uh, you guys can uh, write your questions down at that address and they'll send them over uh, to uh, the right person at SPI. So as you can see on the slide here, our next webinar is going to be on eye protection on June 17th. So uh, just make sure to, 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 to be there for, for that webinar. I think it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to talk about some pretty cool stuff. And especially since eye protection is a pretty big uh, uh, workplace injury, I think it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty important to assist that webinar. So again, guys, thanks a lot for your participation. Thanks a lot for being here. Uh, like I said earlier on, we'll send you guys a survey. Uh, if, if, please just fill it out. Let us know what you think about our webinars. Uh, we want to get better at this. We want to bring uh, so, some innovation to do it. So if ever you guys uh, think we need to, to, to work on some, some things, uh, go ahead and don't be shy. And also, like I said, there's going to be a link uh, if you guys want to listen again to, uh, to this webinar. Uh, um, on your time, or if you have some coworkers that want to listen to it, or you want to present it to some coworkers, there's going to be a link that we're going to send off uh, to you. So again, thank you all. Thank you, Pia, for for your participation. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks for being a, a a good partner of SPI, and we we love doing business with Delta, and uh, hopefully we can continue uh, on this path for many years to come. So again, guys, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Be safe and we'll see each other on June 17th.